So, hello, welcome to my talk, Fuzzing the Phone in Your Phone. Um, short intro introduction, why, why is the uh, talk named Fuzzing the Phone in Your Phone? So, in the earlier days, uh, all the people just fuzzed like web browsers or some other applications on um, mobile phones or smartphones. And this talk is about actually fuzzing a phone relevant part, SMS, on, a, on smartphones. So, I'm a PhD student at TU Berlin here, and I specialize in smartphone security. And this talk was actually joint work together with Charlie Miller, a security researcher, well known for some iPhone and G1 hacks, the first ones. Pretty smart and cool guy. So, agenda, first I will give a short introduction on SMS. What is SMS? Then, what are the difficulties with fuzzing SMS? Then we show how we do uh, or how we did iPhone, Android, and Windows Mobile, um, SMS injection, and SMS fuzzing. And then I will show some interesting uh, fuzzing results. So SMS, everybody knows it. You send like these nice small text messages to other people. Um, normally, yeah, you can send like 167-bit characters or 140 um, one-byte uh, characters to other phones. Everybody just knows it for text messaging, but you can also deliver binary data, which is normally used for over-the-air configuration or ringtone downloads. MMS uses it. The um, iPhone visual voicemail also use it, uses it. And it's really an essential part of the whole um, mobile phone um, service uh, infrastructure. So without SMS, many things don't work. For example, if you get a new voicemail, then you get this SMS which tells you, hey, you have a new voicemail. And so why, why, why would you attack uh, SMS? First, it's, since it's an essential part, every phone, every operator supports it. There's no real firewalling um, done for SMS. Some, some operators have infrastructure to do some filtering, but on the phones it's basically unfiltered or not filterable by the user. And it's really, the nice part is no user interaction is required. So for an email, you still have to like open the email, start the email client, whatever, to get exploited. But with SMS, it's like the 90s with servers, you just send something and bang, you exploit it. And the other nice thing is you just need a phone number to attack somebody. And where you get a phone number, hey, can I have your business card? So it's really, it's, it's a, a fun part. And if you find something, you can have a lot of fun with it. So how does SMS work? Basically, it's a, a store and forward service where you, from your phone you send something to the infrastructure, and the infrastructure then sends it to another part in, of infrastructure, like another SMSC, um, and that other SMSC then delivers it to the, to the recipient, or if the, both um, phones are handled by the same SMSC, the same SMSC just delivers it to the other phone. One small interesting part um, is that you actually have two slightly different formats for SMSs. One is uh, the format that is used when a phone sends an SMS, and one is that is used when a phone actually receives a message. This is kind of interesting for the fuzzing part. So SMS deliver is actually what we were mostly messing with. But on the, on the device, there is a whole, a whole other picture on how um, uh, SMSs are actually received by the phone and then handled by the different applications. So first, most of the modern smartphones actually have two processors. One is the application processor, like in your PC, which runs this uh, operating system, like Android, Windows Mobile, or your iPhone uh, OS, OS X. And then we have this um, second uh, processor, which is basically the modem. It has some specialized real-time operating system. And both of these um, CPUs are basically just connected via a serial line, um, at least from the application perspective. Underneath, it may be connected via SPI or some other obscure bus. Um, but have a, um, a serial line and still have these old cool AT commands. So this is just some arbitrary CPU from from Texas Instruments, which is your, your big CPU which runs your OS, and then you have your modem down here. And you see uh, in the default, you have this word, a serial line, 
where you can actually talk to the modem. So how, when an actual SMS comes in, it's received by the modem, decoded, and then the modem just dumps out, oops, dumps out um, these two lines. First you have um, uh, the command for, hey, here's a new SMS, and now you get 30 bytes of binary, and then you get the binary in hex, which is the complete SMS with sender, uh, sender number and the data at the end. That's basically how your iPhone gets an SMS via plain old AT command. Um, so, but an SMS is just is not just text. So you have this this PDU. This uh, we have all the different fields, um, type of address, then the SMSC number. And you have other coding schemes, and then you have yeah user data header uh, user data, which is just the payload. Um, so this was a very, a very simple example. Then you have um, extend, extensions like the user data header, which is used for um, mostly for the delivering different binary protocols. So for example, this is one user data header, which um, says, OK, this SMS is part of a bigger SMS. Um, so this is the user data header for multi-part SMS. So this is actually the identifier. Then you have the length. And this down there actually tells you, okay, we have total number, uh, total parts of three. This is the, cur the current number is three, which already gives you a good idea where you want to go with fuzzing later. So then you have other user data headers. So for example, the voicemail indication, which is used for mostly in the US, as far as I know, not here, where you can actually set some nice icons on your phone, which tells you, hey, you have a new voicemail, and you have port addressing, like this TCP IP. You can actually say here, send this SMS this goes to a port. So for example, this is the iPhone visual voicemail, which is just sent to this port. And yeah, which is basically a URL where the iPhone then gets something. Then you have stuff like the push. So, so this is just yeah, port addressing. When you begin looking at SMS, then you maybe you don't want to read the specs right away. So you get uh, and the nice tool PDU spy where you can just take these um, messages you get out of the serial line and put them in here. Then you get a good example of what is actually used, what is there. And if you later generate your own SMSs, you can use it to in the beginning to do some validation. Okay, now now to fuzzing. First, a uh, small small introduction. What what fuzzing is? Basically, fuzzing is you take some input to some application protocol. Um, you yeah you create like malformed inputs. So either you take some existing input, you capture it from the network, you mutate it a little bit, give it to the application, see if it crashes. Um, um, yeah, do it again, do it again um, until something happens. So either you can yeah, uh, take some existing mutated, or what I prefer actually, like read the specs and implement um, your own yeah, generator to, yeah, to generate these malformed messages. Um, of course, you don't want to do that manually. So actually, what well, you want to set up some fuzzing framework where you generate this um, uh, malformed input and something to record interesting events, crashes, detect if the device hangs, because it's not a piece of software on your computer, which you can just kill minus nine restart. Um, on the phone, you actually have to really see if the phone totally hangs, and then maybe you have to reboot it or reboot parts of it. And then you have dialogues. So this is, gives you some additional hurdles on, on mobile phones to do it like really complete unmanned automated, because your primary goal is to set up the fuzzer go to bed and wake up with some zero days the next day. Um, yeah, so again, so my, since we, uh, this was like a, a group team project, um, yeah, Charlie went for like, yeah, uh, using Sully, which is a nice Python framework to do some generation mutation, uh, and I built this crafting library, so I will mostly talk about some crafting. Yeah. So basically, um, my crafting library um, supports 